When I was traveling to Thailand in my late teens, I met an unusual guy from the UK. Let's call him John. An awesome guy with plenty of travel experience. It was his sixth month in Southeast Asia where we met in a backpacker hostel. And the travel hasn't always been easy for him. Before his journey to Southeast Asia, he was spending time in Australia. And because Australia is rather expensive, John needed to look for a job. And the only job he could find was as a butcher in a slaughterhouse. A factory farm. John's job was repetitive and cruel. He needed to make sure the chickens in the factory are getting beheaded. He essentially was responsible for dozens of chicken deaths every single minute. For us vegans, a behavior like this is inexplicable. We try to avoid suffering in our lifestyle as much as we can. But for others, torture and death is their daily bread and butter. Today you will learn about the psychology of a butcher based on my talk with John, the scientific data available and my never shared before personal experience with a butcher, which was our neighbor when I was a child. Despite what you would think, John was not scared psychologically by his experience. John also didn't display open traits of a psychopath. John seemed to be a normal guy, looking to make ends meet. He explained how the first day at the job was horrible. He talked about the first time the blade was beheading the chicken on the conveyor belt. The sound and the smell was devastating for his psychological health and he struggled with loss of sleep. But the second day somehow was easier. The third day he got accustomed to his new circumstances of killing. In the following weeks he even joined his colleagues by making jokes of the chickens that managed to escape the conveyor belt before their beheading. Although the escape was usually short lasting. He explained to me in detail how the whole factory would cheer on the escaping chickens for a couple seconds before pinning them down, putting them back on the conveyor and ending their life. John didn't deny that he was responsible for the killing, instead he actually accepted it. This behavior, although it being anecdotal, can give us a huge insight into the psychology of a butcher. John is displaying one of the three coping strategies of butchers that I present in a second. I'll not tell you which exactly John is, you can write your guess down in the comments. Number 1. Disassociation I was a troubled kid. It took me ages to build up empathy for animals and I've only really managed to do so as a late teen. When I was really young, I glued living flies to the ground, let snails die in the sun and even burned a mouse in a homemade fire. I can't remember if the mouse was alive or not. I remember one time we caught a living rat and brainstormed of how we are going to kill it. Although these were early signs of psychopathy, I would not consider myself a psychopath at all. Right now I only hesitantly kill flies or spiders. But not mosquitoes though, they're the true f***ers. <laughs> anyway, I always had great empathy for humans, yet as a dumb kid I deemed smaller animals as worthless. It didn't occur to me at all that animals could experience any pain at all. When I was about 9 years old I therefore asked our neighboring butcher to assist in the making of his quote unquote delicious meat. On close distance I've experienced with my little brother a headshot of a cattle, electrocuting of pigs and the full process of slaughter. Yet I didn't feel anything. The reason is this association. The slaughtering animals were not living, breeding beings to my younger self. They were tools that produced meat. Nothing more and nothing less. Some butchers cope with the stress of the daily killing by disassociation. They believe in the narrative that animals do not feel anything and act based on instincts. Because living in this illusion is easier than accepting the cold hard truth. Number 2. Blind obeying. Another reason the slaughter of the cattle, pigs and chickens didn't affect me as a young child was because they were performed by a trusted neighbor. His name was Max and he truly was a very genuine guy. He spoke with our parents beforehand and truly treated animals with great kindness, before butchering them obviously. He explained to us multiple times during the process that he's not a bad guy, that he's only doing his job. We've trusted him and we followed him blindly. He was the authority, he was the guy that took all the responsibility. In fact, he was the guy to blame for the deaths, not us. 
There's a famous Milgram experiment to explain the behavior of the German soldiers in the Second World War. 40 male participants between the age of 20 to 50 years were obtained through a newspaper advertisement for a study on memory. On the day of the study, the participants were each divided into a learner and a teacher. There was also a guy with a lab coat giving instructions. Essentially, the teacher would pose questions and if the answers were wrong, they would give the learner an electrical shock. What the participants didn't know is that they were working with trained actors. The real participant is always the teacher. The learner and the instructor are actors. Now, each time he gives a wrong answer, you move up one switch on the shock generator. And it's important that you follow this procedure exactly. So to help you, uh, let me go through it again very quickly. I would suggest you read the list and the test at a brisk pace to keep it moving. And the results of this experiment were shocking to say the least. 65% of the participants, the so-called teachers, went on to deliver electrical shocks that would have killed the person on the other side. Just because they were told to do so. Giving away responsibility to the authority figure in the lab coat made killers of these normal beings. Neil, you're gonna get a shot. 180 volts. Oh. I can't stand the pain. Not me. I'm not gonna kill that man. You hear him hollering? They said before, the shocks may be painful, but yeah, I'm not dangerous. They're hollering. He can't stand it. What if something happens to him? I mean, who's gonna take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. All right, next one. Slow. Wrong. Answer his neck. 300 volts. Oh! I absolutely refuse to answer anymore. Get me out of here. You can't hold me here. Get me out. One of the coping mechanisms of butchers is blind the bang of an authority. They say things like, if I'm not doing the killing, it gets done anyway or I'm not the bad guy, the company and the consumer is. Number three of the coping mechanisms is sadistic pleasure. Contrary to popular belief, most butchers do not enjoy the killing. They suffer from anxiety, panic, depression, increased paranoia, a sense of disintegration, high level of drugs and alcohol use. Yet some selected butchers contain traits that make them actually enjoy the killing. Although the 10 careers that have the highest proportion of psychopaths are CEOs, lawyers, media, salesperson, surgeon, journalist, police officer, clergy, chef and civil servant, there are psychopaths everywhere and so there are in the meat industry. While a psychopathic salesperson can bring certain individuals into massive debt, a psychopathic butcher in some environments certainly has no limits to his sadistic behavior. There are plenty of videos online of kicking stomping and killing of sentient beings with swords or blunt weapons. I also assume that while the rate of the overall psychopaths are apparently low in the butchering profession, key traits of a psychopath such as lack of remorse and empathy as well as failure to accept responsibility for own actions need to be present in long-term employees at least in the situational environment of a slaughterhouse. Also see coping mechanism 1 and 2 for that. Conclusion. While John was a great guy to talk to, I also now assume that he must have been dealing with quite some trauma and one of the following coping mechanisms. And so did I with what I did as a child and so did the butcher that took me under his wing. There are three ways butchers deal with their profession. It's either disassociation, blind obeying or sadistic pleasure. Our goal should not be to shame people in those professions, but instead look and build sustainable alternatives. Because one thing is for sure, Producing tofu is way less traumatizing than producing steak. If you like the content that I'm producing on a regular basis, please like and subscribe. Plus, if you want to get coached by me and get into your best shape on a vegan diet, visit my website, qualitygains.com.